So Phil, why don't you tell us what you're doing right now? I am uh, unwinding the launch cable. Uh, we have kind of a heavy duty industrial grade launcher here. Made out of a small gel cell battery from a child's power wheels. We will be able to provide an alternative option for libraries as well, but we don't have it with us right now. So if you're not ready to do the industrial size launcher, um, We'll, we'll talk about alternatives. Now, Rhea, what are you holding since I pan to you? Yes, I am holding our other rockets that we're gonna be launching. Um, we're gonna be doing three today. This is a disposable one. We are not expecting to get this one back. Um, this only takes about 15 minutes to 3D print, plus the motor. Um, and this is gonna be our creme de la creme rocket launch. This was also 3D printed. Um, we have three pieces and we have toilet paper rolls and um, and inside we have a parachute as well. Awesome. So we're expecting to hopefully get this one back, but there may be losses. Now, when it comes to TLC Smart Tech, other than our enthusiasm for firing rockets from the company's property on a Friday morning afternoon, what, what did Smart Tech do with these? So these were 3D printed on our own uh, um, 3D printers in office. Okay. But also, we're going to be able to talk about how you can do this in your own library if you have your own 3D printer. Cool. So this is a way to bring kind of high-tech to low-tech. Awesome. And this is where we're firing off from right here? This is. This is our launch site. And we have a, um, a third model as well that I'll talk about. Cool. Now, Phil, the significance of the scotch tape, is this what holds it all together, or? Yeah, the model, um, the model needed to be scaled up just a scotch to make room for the, uh, for the motor, but the, uh, the extra 1% larger size to make it easier to insert the motor caused the rocket to be a little bit bigger than it needed to be to hold the motor in place. Gotcha. Philip, you should have been in a white shirt and black tie today. You know what? I actually brought a TLC shirt with me. It's funny that you mentioned that. I did yeah. forget to put that on. We'll also mention um, it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, special tools really to get off the ground. And this is actually just a piece of heavy gauge. I believe it's referred to as music uh, cable or music wire that you can pick up at most hardware stores or um, your local welding supply shop and it's about uh, an uh, eighth inch or so in diameter and then we have our firing plate that prevents the grass from melting we just drop our rod through the firing plate secure the rod into the ground facing away from your launch area and somewhere safe and we load up a rocket and go right, now phil are you getting ready talk us through real quick what you're doing before we fire off sure so uh we, we have the launch rod in the ground with uh, a metal plate for uh protecting the grass for about 15 feet away and again i have the large industrial size launcher here this is nice because the battery will last me all summer as opposed to a little handheld running on a nine volt and then we have it wired up there's a an intermittent fire switch so we have our initial arming switch again you would have a small key typically on a handheld device um, so I have my arm switch. Phil, how many launches are you uh, conducting for summer? Uh, right now it's, it's going to be about three. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but I now have a ready light. That tells me I have um, a good connection at the motor so that we have uh, a complete circuit. And then uh, we'll push the button and we'll be ready to go. Okay. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Hey, Phil, before we launch, are we go, no go for launch? Uh, we're 90% we're go. Slow down. Oh. Are you ready? Yep. Try one. Oh, no, we're not back. We're not back. Just keep it going. Three, two, one, ignition. We lost it pretty quick. It's definitely not going in a hurry. But we saw a small puff of smoke and I heard a pop. And if you it, heard the it. pop, what that was, that was the reverse the charge to blow the nose cone if we had a parachute in that one. But as Rhea mentioned earlier, that was a small, disposable, lightweight, short print. So we weren't worried about recovering that today. Uh, and it's clearly out in our woods behind the, the campus. Okay, so what's the significance with this rocket? So this is another model that we're just testing out. Um, this one, where the other one, you could see the motor. This one, you can't. Um, it will go in between there. And so when my, my assistant, Philip, is ready, we will insert the motor into this 
the second size. Okay. And if you would like to download this one, this came from Thingiverse. It's called the Mosquito. Okay. Alright, so that just sits in like that. Okay. And we are not expecting to get this one back either. Okay. Oh, I'm sure it would be like. Alright, Philip, walk us through what we just added to our motor. Alright, so this is our igniter and it held in place by a small plastic plug. Um, this is a much safer, more efficient, uh, reliable alternative to using a, a, a fuse and a fuse and a match. And wiring up our firing conductor. for the dramatic rocket shot. Okay. So go, no go. So we, uh, looks like we're go for launch. Mission control, you're go for launch. Final rocket that we're going to be launching today. This is the STB001. That stands for Smart Tech Booster Number One. Um, as you can see, my other rocket is a bookmobile. All right. So some things to consider safety-wise if you're going to be doing rocket launches in your own space. Uh, make sure to check with federal regulation, and you're not too close to an airport or airspace. We made sure to check, and we are over five miles, so we're good. Additionally, this one does have a parachute, so there's a chance we'll get this one back. Thus, the reason we're actually aiming it a bit at HQ, hoping that we will see it come down and maybe be able to recover it afterwards. And you can also um, take a look to find uh, additional information about uh, the types of motors and uh, the heights attainable, obtainable by those motors uh, on many popular websites such as the National Rocket Association or uh, your manufacturer such as Estes. Jameson, uh, we'll note here that we have um, Senior Vice President here, John Burns. Thanks, He's going to push the uh, push the button for the big dog. He's also a fan of space and grew up in uh, in Florida around the Space Coast area. TLC minus three. Booster arm. Two. One. Ignition. Are we go, no go? So as you can see, we did recover the rocket. It uh, came back down in pretty decent shape. 
Uh, the one thing that we forgot to do in our excitement was insert the wadding. And what wadding is, is a non-flammable tissue uh, type paper that goes between your motor and the parachute so that you do not melt your parachute. Had this actually achieved the height we were expecting and the chute fired, we may not have gotten it back in one piece. So um, the failure was actually a good lesson today and we can go buy more motors at our local hobby shop or art store and try again next week.